Hello everyone, it's great to have you here as we share together in our online service. I hope things are going okay for you. In some of my conversations with different people this week, we've been chatting about weariness. Sometimes it might seem that life is going great and at other times things just slow us down a bit and we can find life a bit of a struggle to deal with. Life can be exhausting when we do have to deal with some of the different things that can get thrown at us. Sometimes it might even seem hard to find a way out. But even in those times, and perhaps especially in those times, God is there with us. Even when we might not feel strong enough, we know that we can lean on him, for he is always strong enough for us. When we share the stories of our lives and our journeys of faith with each other, we do often find reoccurring threads and patterns, don't we? Those things that are common in all of our experiences. How often is it that when we look back on a time in our life which seemed exhausting or hopeless, we can see how God was there right with us, walking beside us, holding us, inviting us to lean on him? This is the good news for us today, for nothing is hopeless with God. As I heard someone say this week, his love finds a way of redeeming everything. And so when we look to the life of Jesus, we see how God is redeeming a world to him. And for those of us who might be full of energy, raring to go, and are in a good place in our lives and our journeys of faith, there's good news for us today too. For God calls us to join him in his redeeming work, to walk alongside the weary, to be someone to lean on. As it says in that great Bill Withers song, lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Well, how great is it to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and to help bring hope, give comfort, to build up others and to love. And so as we pray now, let us take a moment to think about any weariness we might be facing in our lives and ask God to help us to lean on him. And if we're feeling that we're in a really good place at the moment, let us ask God to show us where he might be calling us to bless others. And so loving Lord, we thank you that you do find a way to redeem everything. By your Holy Spirit, help us to lean on you, especially when we're feeling weary or things seem hopeless. Help us to be a people who show love for all, blessing others in all that we do, as we follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus. Amen. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. Hello, it's great to be able to share with you again and this week I get to talk about gardening. With the uh, warm weather back it's meant that I've been out in the garden looking after the, the veggies. Pretty pleased with this one. Digging up an old tree stump and planting a Philadelphus. I've always wanted a Philadelphus in the garden. Not one of the large varieties, but a highly fragrant one called Manteau de Hermine. And I'm really looking forward to the scent next year. Uh, so gardening's got me wondering, what's it all about? Now I guess you could answer in all sorts of ways. Um, physical activity, growing plants, creating green space, making a home for wildlife maybe even just hard work. Well, one way of describing gardening is bringing order. Whether it's a highly ornate garden or one for wildlife or anything in between. Whatever we do, in some sort of sense, we're bringing order to the space and in doing so, there will always be some plants which don't fit. So a weed is defined as a plant that's in the wrong place. Now I wonder what's your worst plant? What's your worst weed? Is it uh, cooch grass? Stinging nettle called urticaria because it hurts? Uh, ground elder or bindweed? I think for me um, bindweed. It starts growing after all the other plants have produced leaves so it's hidden. Then it creeps up on your favourite plants, squeezing them and twisting them and eventually it can pull the whole plant down, smothering it, even killing it. In my garden, bindweed is a regular battle. I nip out the shoots and roots at an early stage, hopefully earlier than that one. But you know what they say, one year's seed is seven years weed. Uh, other things that weeds do is they block out light and take precious nutrients from the soil which other plants need. Effectively, they stop other plants from fruiting, flowering, from thriving. Now the weed that Jesus refers to in our passage is particularly nasty. Darnel. It looks just like wheat, but it wraps its roots around the roots of the wheat plant make it impossible to remove without harming the crop. And it's only when the flowers, when it flowers, it's that you know that it's there, by which time it's too late anyway. And what's worth, worse, uh, darnel is poisonous. So it's really important to separate the wheat from the weed at harvest. Otherwise, people will get ill. So here's a question. Are there weeds in the church? People who stop the church from thriving, who pull down and prevent others from seeing the light, get in the way of God bringing order, justice and life to a needy world? It's a good question really. And actually I think there are. It could be any one of us. Any one of us can be disruptive to God's plans and purposes. Sometimes it's just a momentary lapse. Sometimes we need calling out. Like if I was to show prejudice, I hope you would call me out. Sometimes we can be plain obstinate, caught up in our own agenda, blocking the work of God, like a plant in the wrong place. Now God loves order. 
He loves social harmony and justice for needy. There's that famous passage in Amos 5 where God says, I hate, I despise your festivals, I take no delight in your assemblies. Take away from me the noise of your songs, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. God loves worship, but in the context of justice and love for all. The weeds in our passage are those who stand against God's plans, who deliberately sow discord, create disorder, prevent justice, who get off on belittling others, rebel against God. So, I think there are a couple of things I can take from this passage. It reminds me that it is God's kingdom and God's agenda. It is his garden, his field. I mean, we pray, don't we? Your kingdom come, your will be done. So it's a warning for me. Don't be complacent, Paul. Don't let yourself become an obstacle to church flourishing. Give everyone space to belong and become who and what they're called to be. I think it is also a matter of trust, because the servants are told not to sort out the weeds, but to leave it to God's angels. And in the end, we can trust Jesus to sort it all out. I guess the encouragement I can take to sh is to show grace to one another, to people of different opinion and background, to embrace the messiness of life and where there is awkwardness and pain, be supportive and not judgmental. Be comfortable in discomfort and work to be part of the change God desires for his church to be alive today. To let the voices of the unheard rise before God and to be willing to be different tomorrow than I am today. Although in my own garden I will rip out the weeds, in God's kingdom it's not for me to judge who to support and who to oppose. There is always the possibility of a change of heart. So perhaps I can simply look to what disturbs me in the world. Corruption, racism, injustice, damage to the environment, politics, you know, whatever. And then look to what disturbs me in my own life, my own prayer life, my love for God, my love for others, my words and actions. And then ask God for the wisdom and courage to deal with my issues as he does. So may we all ask God for that wisdom and courage to work for the change God wants and let us all grow together. Perhaps then our harvest will be fruitful. Amen. Let us pray. To the bidding, your kingdom come, the response is, in us as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, in us as it is in heaven. Blessed are you, Lord, for you have invited us to share in the kingdom of heaven. Give us ears to hear you alone and strength to resist the temptations of this earthly life. Nurturing God, we pray for the church leaders in this benefice 
diocese and the world, that they may sow the good seed of your word in order that the seed can grow to fruition in all of us. Make the church a place of welcome for all people who are seeking the kingdom of God. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Almighty God, we pray for your world, that there may be acceptance and mutual respect among people of all races, faiths and cultures. Lord, sow the seeds of justice, peace and wisdom in those areas of your world where violence, oppression and injustice reign. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Compassionate God, we give thanks for our families and homes and pray for resilience for loved ones who we are unable to see or visit. As we start the summer holidays, we ask for your peace to descend on families and your spirit to refresh all who work in our schools. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Healing God, we place into your hands all who continue to be affected by COVID-19 and give strength to all who care for them. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body and spirit that they may have courage in the face of suffering and trust in your healing power. Your kingdom come in us as it is in heaven. Everlasting God, we remember with love the lives of those who have departed from us and commend them to your kingdom. We pray for those who mourn at this time, that they may find comfort from knowing that your kingdom is a place of happiness, light and peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for the Sixth Sunday After Trinity Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join together to say our Benefice Prayer. Ever-living, ever-loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant that we may honour you in our prayer and praise. Share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we come to the end of our worship together, let us ask God to bless us this week and for us to be a blessing to others. And so may we be blessed knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength. May we be blessed knowing joy in his faithfulness in profound and life-giving ways. May we be blessed remembering times when he showed us his faithfulness. May we be blessed knowing our Heavenly Father loves us and is pleased with us. May we be blessed knowing who we are in our Lord's eyes and in drinking deeply of the joy that he has in each one of us in who we are. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us and those we love now and always. Amen. And so do have a good and peaceful week, and we do look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye. It's gonna be alright, it's gonna be okay. It's a cold dark night We'll find a day Know that you love Know that you love And when the world starts to blur And your soul gets heavy And when you're at your worst And the ground is on to love Know that you're